I'm Chet Zar, and I'm a painter. I'm originally from San Pedro, California. I currently live in Monrovia, California. And this is a commission for a collector named Chris Velasco. He asked me to basically do a portrait of Cthulhu, which is uh, the great old one from the writings of H.P. Lovecraft. And I wanted to give it a more of a kind of a creepy, gangly look, as opposed to all the other Cthulhus you see are usually big bodybuilder guys, big muscular, strong dudes, but I don't really think that's creepy. I think uh, thin and gangly and slightly more feminine is a lot creepier. A little more like the alien, the alien. Um, so I went for a creepy, thin, gangly Cthulhu, which I haven't really seen before, I don't think. Just kind of detailing it right now, finishing the background and stuff. And it's just about done. It's gonna have a custom frame as well on it. I'm gonna sculpt little Cthulhu heads, I think, for the corners. intuitive process for me. I usually start with a sketch and um, kind of develop it like a doodle really. It always ends up being something, some kind of monster. It's been like that since I was a kid. Yeah, it's very much uh, just sort of comes out of my mind when I'm doodling. I know it's weird when you're when you're doodling, or at least when I'm doodling, it's like you you just kind of start messing around and scribbling around and try and recognize something that might have potential and you just kind of keep following it. It's really, it's really pretty interesting when you think about it because you, you're, you're following this thing, you don't know where it's going to lead. And you know, you just start sketching and it's almost like a game. You're trying to find this thing that seems to exist in your head somewhere. And so it's just a process of following this mysterious thing and seeing where it leads and building upon the last step you uh, just did, the last little piece you drew, you just kind of keep building on it. Most of the time I don't have a strong idea about what I'm going to do. I just like to let my mind wander. And My favorite medium is probably oils. I paint, I've painted acrylics and I like that all right, but I love oils. There's something about oils I just love. It's particularly oil painting is difficult, so it, the challenge is always there, so you don't get bored with it. And uh, that seems like the more you paint, you realize the more there is to know about it. I love sculpting though. That's sort of what I did before I started painting. I was a sculptor in the film industry for many years and uh, I love doing that. It's, it's really fun. And I love music too. I used to be a musician, songwriter. So any, you know, really when it comes down to it, anything creative I'm interested in. Uh, I, I did digital for a while. I was doing 3D animation and stuff and was real interested in filmmaking as well. Anything creative, you know, I can get into it for sure. I started working in the film industry pretty much right out of high school, maybe a year after high school. I think it was 18 or 19. But my first big film was The Blob, the remake of The Blob in the mid to late 80s. And after that, I worked on this movie called Dark Man and worked on a ton of movies after that. Too many to remember. You know, it was a really fun job. I was super passionate about it. And with any commercial type of art, there's always creative compromises and politics and stuff like that. And I just kind of got burnt out on that. I just said, F it, I want to do my own thing. I'm going to do exactly whatever I want to do artistically. I'm going to try painting and I'm going to paint whatever I want to paint. And just as a creative outlet, let's see if it works. And 
give it a shot. Because I really wanted, more than anything, I just wanted to kind of pursue my own vision. I initially got involved with Tool because I knew the guitar player, Adam Jones, before he was in Tool. He was an effects guy also. He worked in the film industry, so we met at a shop. I don't remember what film it was for sure. Maybe Dark Man or Swamp Thing. I did Swamp Thing TV series. It might have been on that. I don't really remember, but we became friends and even jammed a couple times. And we kind of lost touch because people in the film industry working at shops, you know, you, you work in a shop for a few months, then you go work in another shop and kind of, you know, fall out of touch with people. And next thing I knew, his band had hit big and I was hearing him on the radio and uh, then he gave me a call and asked me if I wanted to work on a bit of music video and then I worked on that and subsequently worked on his other music videos videos and did some 3D animated visuals for their live show and t-shirt art and stuff like that and uh, it was great. Working with Tool is always amazing. If all the jobs in Hollywood were like working on Tool videos then I probably wouldn't have left the industry because there's so much creativity there and so much cool stuff you feel like you're working on something that's going to matter and be good. So yeah, it's always super fun working with them. wasn't painting all the time. I would have hobbies, but it's, it's kind of hard to uh, make a living as a fine artist, so I have to kind of paint all the time. Um, but as far as hobbies I would like to have, <laughs> things that I like to do other than paint, uh, I love playing guitar and watching movies. I watch movies while I paint, so I kind of kill two birds with one stone there. I love reading. I don't get to do enough of. You know, I'd really like to get back into music if I ever had the time. But those are the big ones, I guess. I can call them hobbies now. Music, reading, watching movies. That's pretty much it. I remember being in the, like the first grade and fantasizing about having a, an art studio. And then my parents divorced and then my mom met up with uh, her high school sweetheart, which was my stepdad. And uh, yeah, he was a working artist and it was really kind of a weird cosmic thing that happened, you know, it's kind of a trip. So he eventually moved his studio into our house, into our den, not unlike my studio here in my house. So it was really cool to grow up around art being created everywhere. It really did have a big influence on me. You learn a lot that way just by watching it and just living around it your entire life. Um, some things just become second nature or they don't seem so weird when you go to try them because you've seen, you know, you saw your dad doing it all the time and so when you go to do it, it's like, it doesn't seem like some new thing, you know what I mean? So that yeah, was great, it was a really great education to, to grow up around a painter who was painting every single day. Yeah, I've got a couple galleries I show my work at. My main gallery, uh, Copro Gallery in Santa Monica. And in New York, I show with Last Rites Gallery, which is Paul Booth's gallery. Those are pretty much my two main galleries. I show some stuff at uh, La Magerie Gallery in North Hollywood. I have some stuff hanging there. And occasionally I'll show at my friends' galleries like The Hive or Cannibal Flower. But yeah, Copro and Last Rites are my main galleries. And as far as getting a commission or anything like that, getting in contact with me, I put my stuff online all the time. I'm always sharing pictures of my progress stuff. You can go to my website, chatzar.com, if you want to contact me about commissions or whatever. But I'm on Instagram and I'm always showing progress pictures. It's basically the only social life I have. 
is through social media. <laughs> so I, I'm constantly taking pictures and uh, posting them online and it's interesting to get feedback while you're working on something as well as keeping track of what you're doing and you kind of look back over the years and you have this diary sort of of all your artwork. It's kind of cool. Probably the most famous painting I've done was this one called Black Magic. This guy with a gas mask holding a gun and a top hat and um, I really like that painting. I think it's one of my best paintings, but I also have a special connection to it because it, it's one of the few times that a painting just popped up in my head out of nowhere and I saw it finished in my mind just like in this, just a blink of an eye popped in. I wasn't thinking about anything. It was really weird. I just had this image of this finished painting in my head and so all I had to do was paint it and then it ended up being you know kind of putting putting me up a level as far as my career people really liked it and uh, it felt like some gift from the universe or whatever just popped in my head so I kind of have a special place in my heart for that painting I really like painting from my last show I did called Ego Death it's got the Grim Reaper meditating and floating and then all my characters behind him sort of looking at him shocked and uh, I like that painting a lot. It's got kind of a spiritual meaning to me. But it's hard to choose. I paint what I want to see. You know, I won't show it if it's not successful, if I didn't succeed. But I like most of them. They're like your kids, you know. He's making a documentary about me. Uh, the documentary is called I Like to Paint Monsters. It's basically about my artwork and my life. He's in post-production right now and he's getting it ready to enter in all the film festivals and hopefully have it released this year. Something people don't know about me is, uh, uh, you know, I've, I guess I've talked about it a little bit, but I've always had really weird kind of paranormal experiences since I was a kid. I used to have like out of body experiences all the time and I told a story in my book published in my artwork last year that I wasn't really raised religious at all, but I had a dream the night before Easter that I was being in a line of people being crucified to get saved. And I woke up the next morning and looked down at my hands and I had little marks on my hands. These weird little small circular marks that were kind of like calluses. And uh, they lasted all of Easter and then the next day they were completely gone. And that's a pretty weird thing. <laughs> so, but we always had like ghosts and shit in our house. When I was growing up, all these weird stuff going on. My brother and sister, uh, they both grew up in the same house and they weren't into like weird, creepy stuff like I was, you know? So it, it, it really feels like genetic or something. I don't know what it is. But I, I just always, I, I, probably it was a way of dealing with my fear, you know? I think as a little kid, it was kind of, if I could draw monsters, I wouldn't be so afraid of them because I was a pretty shy kid and pretty scared of the world in a lot of ways. So I think it might have been kind of a coping mechanism. It just kind of developed into its own thing, became my identity sort of. I think dark art kind of uh, brings people's fears out into the light and it makes them less afraid. If you can appreciate the beauty of a of, uh, a monster or some weird creature you tend to be I think you, you're not afraid of it anymore and it kind of helps kill fear so I think it's it's something that's sort of positive and necessary I think the world needs more dark art realize the more there is to learn about it. Um.
in hell. Sorry. No worries. Shit. Let me put him in here too. So I guess something that people don't know about me is I've got a huge <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I said, I said. Yeah. <laughs> you can't leave it in. All right. 